Hello again and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to share a workshop that I gave uh, to a group of students a few days ago. It's about the TOEFL integrated essay and yeah this video is going to be kind of long but I think it'll be useful if you're uh, preparing for the writing section of the TOEFL. Before I get started uh, I will mention you can find the text and the audio from today's presentation at the link on the screen and I'll also put it in the video description. And before we get started please pause the video, grab some paper and a pencil because we're going to do some writing together before the video is over. Now I will back it up a little bit and share with you uh, a description of the writing section overall. There's a few things you should know. First up, the writing section is the last part of the TOEFL test. It has two questions. They have equal value. First there's the integrated essay, then the independent essay. You have an hour to complete this section, uh, which includes uh, 50 minutes of actual writing time and accounts for 25% of the overall TOEFL score. As I said, we're just talking about the integrated writing task in today's video. It's called the integrated task because you do reading, listening, and writing. It's integrating those three skills. First, you read a short academic article, and then you listen to a related lecture. You write an essay using information from both, and you can see the article as you write. You have 20 minutes of writing time. That includes planning the essay, writing the essay, and revising the essay. And yeah, that's a really tight schedule, but with practice, it will become easier. I promise. Just to kind of get a little more detailed, you have three minutes to read the article. They generally tend to be about 300 words long, so three minutes is enough. And then you listen to the lecture. The lectures tend to be two minutes long, uh, sometimes a bit longer, sometimes a bit shorter. And then you read a question on the screen, and then you write your response. You have 20 minutes to write it. And the way the reading and the lecture relate to each other is pretty much the same every week. Now, there's no guarantees. You could get a surprise, uh, but basically it, it looks like what you see on the screen here. Most commonly, the reading presents an argument, and then the lecturer presents a counter-argument. So the reading says one thing, and then the lecturer says, no, 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 that's all wrong. Sometimes it's slightly different, where the reading presents a problem, and then the lecture presents solutions to the problem. So you can see they're still kind of adversarial, but the design is a little different. Other times, the reading presents a solution to some problem, and then the lecture challenges the solution. So again, it's still kind of adversarial. And then the question on the screen, it kind of looks the same every week. Basically something like, summarize the points made in the lecture, being sure to explain how they oppose specific points made in the reading passage. Or something like summarize the points made in the lecture, being sure to explain how they answer the specific problems presented in the reading passage. So you can see your job is to kind of summarize uh, the information from both sources and, and talk about their adversarial relationship. So to make this perfectly crystal clear, I want to show you a few samples of articles and lectures. First up, here is a reading, an article. Uh, it has four paragraphs, which is kind of what you're most likely going to get on the test. The first paragraph introduces the topic. In this case, the topic is colonizing asteroids and the author's argument, which is that it's beneficial and worthwhile to do that. And then each body paragraph has a supporting reason. So the first one says, this is beneficial because of the scientific potential. And then it talks about the experiments they can do and how they could lead to future missions to other places in the solar system. So you've got one whole body paragraph about that reason. The next body paragraph is about a different reason. In this case, the economic growth and development it could lead to. And the paragraph gives a few more details about mining and stuff. Lastly, the third body paragraph has a third reason, which is the long-term survival of humanity. And it talks about how we can live on them if there's a disaster. So you got an introduction and then three body paragraphs. Each body paragraph has one specific uh, supporting reason. And just note how these body paragraphs are like self-contained. All the stuff about science is here in the first one. All the stuff about the economy is here in the second one. There's, there's not overlap, they're, they're individual units. 
Next up, here's a sample lecture that would go along with this. Now, on the real test, you don't get to read the lecture. There's no transcript. But I've just kind of typed it out here so you can see how it's designed. At the beginning, the lecturer is going to talk about what, what his main subject is, which is, again, colonizing asteroids, and his main argument, which is uh, the reasons from the reading are not true. It's, it's not so beneficial. And then first, he's dealing with the scientific benefits. He says, yeah, those might not be true. Uh, we don't know about the asteroids. Uh, we don't know how many there are or what resources they contain. So the scientific benefits might not come true. Next, he says, yeah, also the economic benefits might not come true. We don't know how many resources they have and we don't know how much they're going to be worth. And then finally, he says, yeah, this whole stuff about the long-term settlement also maybe not true because it's very uncomfortable to live on them for long periods of time and it could damage our bones and muscles. So you can see the lecture is like a total mirror image. He's challenging the three specific reasons from the reading. He's not bringing up new stuff. He's just challenging specifically and exactly what was in the reading and also he's doing it in the same order first science next economics and then finally long-term survival so they're like they're like total mirror images of each other and if you understand this i think your job might be a little bit easier when you're taking the test let's look at another one really quickly this is the uh the problem solution style here um so at the beginning of the reading, the author talks about uh, some problem, which is uh, that the population of peregrine falcons is declining. But he's like, I'm going to give you three solutions to this problem. First, he says, uh, we could protect their nesting sites, and that'll, that'll help them. And he gives some details about that. Next, he says, we could control the populations of predators. That'll help them. That, that'll solve the problem. And he gives some details. Lastly, he says, we can help the injured or sick falcons, and he gives a few details. Introduction, one reason, two reason, three reason. Or in this case, one solution, two solution, three solution. Next up, here's a transcript of the matching lecture. At the beginning, the lecturer says, I'm going to talk about falcons, but these uh, solutions that the reading mentioned, they're not so effective. First, he says, protecting the nesting sites is really difficult to do because, uh, you know, sometimes they're on private property and they're also in cities, so it's hard to balance their needs with the needs of humans. So protecting the nesting sites may not always work. Next, he says that if we try to control the predators, uh, there might be unintended consequences. Like if we eliminate one predator, uh, some other predator might spring up and then it could, you know, hurt all the falcons. Lastly, he says rehabilitating the injured ones might help individual birds, but it's expensive and slow. And there's other things which are a bigger deal. So helping the injured ones, uh, not very useful. So you can see the lecture is specifically challenging the three things from the reading and it's doing so in the same order. And like, I really want to make sure this is crystal clear. The reading has three points, one, two, three. And then the lecture has three counterpoints, one, two, three, and they're in the same order. So you really want to understand this uh, as you're preparing for the writing section. And then you write an essay based on this, right? What goes into an essay? Well, I'm gonna show you some examples in just a moment, but it's, it's pretty clear what goes into this essay. You should start with an introduction, which includes background information, and then you should state the author's position and the lecturer's position. So the background information could be something like, the article and the lecture are both about uh, the colonization of asteroids. And then you can give the author's position. The author feels that this is very beneficial because it will help with uh, advancing science and it could be economically beneficial and it'll ensure the long-term survival of humanity. And then you would say the lecturer's position. Something like the lecturer, on the other hand, challenges these ideas. He feels it's not beneficial to colonize asteroids. After that, you've got three body paragraphs. 
Each body paragraph contains one of the reading points and then the lecturer's counterpoint. That's basically what goes into a, a essay. I don't think you need a concluding paragraph, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Before we uh, look at some sample essays, let's kind of talk about note-taking strategies. So here's how I do it. Before the test starts, or sorry, before the writing section starts, while they're kind of like giving you some instructions on the screen or something, I take my paper and I set it up like you see on the screen here. I write reading, I write listening, I write one, two, three, and I put some arrows. I think you can see how I'm going to use this on the test. While I'm reading the article, I take some notes. I'm just taking kind of like the broad kind of things. Uh, I'm not going into too much detail here. Uh, I'm using some short forms, but I'm not worrying too much because I can look at the reading as I'm writing the essay. However, I feel that taking some notes as you're reading it for the first time is a good idea because sometimes when I'm reading something boring about birds or asteroids, my mind tends to wander. Uh, I'll think about anything other than what I'm supposed to be thinking about. And that means uh, I'm kind of wasting those three minutes they give me to read it. So if I'm taking some notes here, I'm, I'm being a more active reader and uh, it's more useful. So I think you should do the same. Next up. I take notes as I'm listening. Now, this is harder, right? This takes practice. I'm, I'm getting as much as I can. Uh, and I'm using these short forms. Like, if I want to say, like, something negative, like not or can't or couldn't, I'll use an X. So I use X know enough. That means we don't know enough. X know how many. We don't know how many asteroids there are. X know conditions. We don't know the conditions. I'm using the short form uh, for condition there. And then the same thing here, X no resources or value on Earth. I'm using short forms like cost effect, grav and dang, uncomf. Um, I'm also generally taking out the little short words, the, if, and, so. Those little words I'm not putting in my notes because eh, that's just taking up time that's, uh, uh, that's better spent on other things. So I'm trying to get as many notes as I can. Like it's impossible to get everything, but I am trying to get as much as I can uh, using these strategies. The last thing I do for notes is as soon as the lecture is done, I try to remember stuff and I try to expand my notes somewhat. So I go back and I think, ah, while it's still fresh in my head, I'm like, ah, yeah, we, we, we cannot predict the benefit. And then I, I realize, ah, oh, yeah, 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 less cost effective than on Earth. So I'm still trying to fill in the notes a little bit as soon as the lecture is done with the stuff I remember, but before it all kind of evaporates from my head. Another thing you could do, which I didn't represent here, is you might want to like expand the short forms a little bit as soon as the test is done, uh, just to avoid confusion and, um, and uh, you know, to make it easier to write your essay. And also, I, I didn't do it here, but like as soon as the lecture is done, you might want to take some notes like in your native language of just stuff you remember like right away because uh, that'll probably help you on the test. Like it, it totally doesn't matter if you have some notes uh, in your native language. Uh, maybe that's useful. I don't know. You should experiment as you, uh, as you take the test or as you prepare for the test, I should say. So let's look at a model essay that I wrote using those notes, by the way. Uh, this is an essay about uh, asteroids, of course. And uh, you can see my essay is uh, four paragraphs long. As I said, I've got an introduction and I've got three body paragraphs. Each body paragraph is about, you know, one of the points and the counterpoint uh, relationship. What did I do? Uh, when I wrote this essay? Well, you can see that my introduction is three sentences long and I start my introduction, as I said, with some background stuff. The reading and the lecture are about the possibility of starting colonies on asteroids. And then I state the author's opinion. 
This is a good idea due to scientific benefits, economic benefits, and the long-term survival of humans. Then I state the lecturer's opinion. The lecturer does not believe that the author's claims are correct. And that's my introduction. It's kind of short, it's sweet, and then I move on to the body paragraphs. Now, the body paragraphs are just like I said. I start by summarizing the author's opinion from the first point, and then I summarize the lecturer's opinion from the matching counterpoint. And I've done the same thing in the other two paragraphs. I think my lecture summary is a little bit longer than my reading summary. That's intentional. Uh, the lecture details, I think, are more important than the reading details, in my opinion. Some other techniques I used when I was writing the essay. Uh, I'm using all these little transitions that you always hear about. First of all, moreover, on the other hand, as a result, to be more specific, in contrast, you want to kind of like flavor your essay with phrases like that. Don't overdo it. Don't put them in every single sentence. But yeah, put a few in the essay to kind of connect details and to show relationships uh, between different details. Uh, that's something I think the human writer is looking for and, and probably the automated e-writer as well. The other thing I did is that I always tried to make clear where uh, the details were coming from. So I have phrases like, the author argues that, the article notes that, the lecturer says that, according to the article, the lecturer challenges this idea, he notes, the author claims that, you know, whatever. Again, don't do that for every single sentence, but uh, try to use them throughout the essay to some extent. Now again, if you want to read this whole essay, just pause the video or check out the link in the description. Uh, you'll be able to read it all. Let me know if you find any typos or mistakes. There's probably a few. Nobody's perfect. So let's do a little bit of practice together. So as I said, I, I hope you have some paper and pencil ready because we're going to write. So here is a reading about Machu Picchu. I want you to read this and uh, I want you to take, uh, take notes. Set up your paper like I showed you. You know, rewind the video if you need to uh, to see what the paper looks like and, uh, and take your notes. And I'm gonna ask you to pause the video for three minutes while you take your notes. I don't wanna leave a bunch of, uh, of dead air. So anyways, take your notes. Okay, so you've read the article for three minutes, you've taken your notes, and now you're gonna listen to a lecture on the same topic. Normally you would have a, uh, somebody with a more serious kind of professor voice, but uh, I'm just gonna read this live from my phone. So uh, get ready. Again, take some notes as you listen to me read it. Use short forms, use X's, omit little words, do your best. Here goes. The author's ideas about the purpose of Machu Picchu are certainly interesting, but each of them has a few flaws. A problem with the idea of Machu Picchu as a royal residence is its remoteness. While the site is located in a beautiful area, it's far from the center of the Inca Empire and would have been difficult to access. This would have made it impractical as a residence for the emperor who probably needed to be close to the political and administrative centers of the empire. For this reason, the site may have been a temporary vacation home for the emperor rather than a full-time residence. Next, while the idea that Machu Picchu was built as a ceremonial and religious center uh, is a popular theory, it's not without its flaws. One challenge to this idea is the lack of evidence of religious activity at the site. While the citadel does contain impressive stonework and many elaborate carvings, there are no clear indications that it was used for religious ceremonies or rituals. In contrast, other Inca sites, uh, such as the Temple of the Sun in Cusco, contain clear evidence of religious activity, including altars, offerings, and other artifacts. Lastly, it's quite difficult to claim that Machu Picchu was built as a defensive fortress. While the citadel contains strong walls and terraces, there, there just aren't any clear indications that it was used for military purposes. 
Very few actual weapons or military tools have been found there. The Inca were known for their elaborate military practices, and the remains of their soldiers and weapons have been found at many other Inca sites. The absence of clear signs of military activity at Machu Picchu suggests uh, that it was not used for defensive purposes. Okay, that's the end of the lecture. Uh, I hope you've got some notes. Now, take a minute to uh, take a minute to expand those notes with stuff from your memory that's that's fresh. Here's the notes I took. Uh, you know, it's just as I said, I got reading in the lecture. I got one, two, three, I got my arrows. Uh, you know, I wrote that it was built as a royal estate. It needed luxurious and impressive stuff uh, to impress visitors. You know, I'm using a plus sign instead of and. I'm using short forms. And then I've got the lecture details. It was too remote and it was X close to admin and poly center. Temp res. I'm using my short forms. I'm using my X's. Same down below, I wrote about the ceremonial and religious aspect, and then I wrote some details. X evidence related activity, X used for rituals, and then, you know, some more details. And then you can see, after the lecture finished, I, I tried to expand it a little bit, you know, too remote, and then I was like, aha, difficult access, so I put that in. And then I was like, ah, I think he mentioned vacations, right? So I put that with a question mark. And then here I was like, he, he mentioned the Temple of the Sun, didn't he, right? And so I put that down there too as an extra detail while it was still fresh in my mind. Because I guarantee you, after five minutes as I'm writing the essay, I'm not going to remember that. So I need to put it in the essay or I need to put it in my notes while I still can remember it. Now I will mention though, as you're writing the essay, kind of be bold. Don't depend only on your notes, right? I think you want to, uh, you know, sometimes you are going to have to use stuff from your memory if you remember it. And, and I think that's probably okay. I want you to be bold. And if you, if you remember some detail and it's not on your paper, like, I, I think you, you might want to consider putting it in the essay. It might be a good idea. Just a thought. Again, you should experiment as you prepare for the test and, and see how good your memory is. So after you read and listen and you take your notes and you adjust your notes, you get the question on the screen. It's going to look something like this. Summarize the points made in the lecture, being sure to explain how they oppose specific points made in the reading passage. Now, You've still got your paper. Maybe flip over the paper or, you know, get your computer, whatever. And I want you to write the introduction for this essay. Uh, give yourself three or four minutes. Uh, pause the video. Write the introduction like I told you to do before. Okay. You've written your introduction. Here's mine. Uh, again, it's, it's three sentences long. What did I do? Well, I started by introducing the idea, the main kind of subject, the background information, the reading and the lecture are about the reasons why Machu Picchu was constructed. And then I mentioned the main point of the author. The, reading, the author of the reading suggests that it was built either as a royal estate, a ceremonial center, or a defensive fortress. And then I mentioned the main point of the lecturer, he challenges these ideas. He says why they don't explain why it was built. That's my introduction. Spent about three or four minutes on that. I think that's a good use of your time. Okay, next up. Uh, pause the video for about five minutes and try writing the first body paragraph. That'll be the last thing we write uh, today. But if you watch to the end of the video, I'll give you a I'll give you a special offer of free feedback, so you keep watching. Okay, you took five minutes, you wrote your first body paragraph, here is my first body paragraph. What did I do here? Well, you can see I started by mentioning the, uh, the details from the reading. I, you know, the, the reading suggests that Machu Picchu was uh, used as a royal residence. 
And then I gave the supporting detail about the impressive location and the power and wealth it conveyed. And then I mentioned the lecturer's details that challenge it. Uh, he notes it was impractical as a permanent residence because it was far from the political and administrative centers. Uh, so it may have just been used as a temporary vacation home. That's my body paragraph. Some of the other techniques, uh, I always try to make clear where the details are coming from. First of all, the reading suggests that. According to the reading, the lecturer challenges, challenges this idea. He notes that. So you always know where the details are coming from. And I used a few basic transitions like however and as a result. Okay, so that's, uh, that's all I'm gonna show you for this essay. I don't wanna show you the rest of it because I'm gonna make you a special offer. And that is if you finish your essay and you paste it into a comment down below, I will give you a little feedback on it. Uh, and maybe do me a favor and uh, before you paste it, uh, I don't know, like the video and subscribe to the channel. So uh, that'll help me out as well. Uh, it might take me a few days to get you your comment, but I'll, I'll try to check everything, you know, at least for the, the first few months of this video being online. I'll conclude the video here by talking about a few more technical details. I want to talk about how this is scored uh, just a very quick look at the scoring rubrics. As most of you probably know, the, um, the TOEFL essays all get a score from a human rater, and it's either one, two, three, four, or five. They only have five possible scores, and there's no half scores. They're just picking a score. And the criteria they use to pick this score, it's not a secret. Uh, you know, we can see it. It's publicized. And uh, take a look at a level five scoring essay, it mentions a few things, right? It says that a response at this, at this level selects the important information from the lecture and presents it in relation to the relevant information presented in the reading. That's like the most important thing, that you're getting the correct details from the lecture and the reading. It should be well organized. I think that means turning it into a proper essay and it's allowed to have occasional language errors that do not result in inaccurate or imprecise presentation of content or connections. So you, you wanna have grammar that's as strong as possible and as correct as possible. Now note that this is a little different than the way the independent essay is scored. Uh, the rubric for that essay, it has a lot of technical stuff like syntactic variety or idiomaticity or, or lexical errors. And, and so I think the independent essay is supposed to include slightly more complicated grammar. Here, it's not asking for anything quite so complicated. It just wants the details and it wants them to be written correctly. So don't kind of stress yourself about including uh, really complicated long sentences. Just focus on correctness and on, um, on accuracy. A few pro tips uh, that you should know, I think. As I said, advanced grammar is less important than in the independent task, I believe. Uh, the rubrics emphasize the importance of including all the details. Don't copy and paste from the reading. I want you to paraphrase. Yeah, the reading is available as you write, but don't copy it word for word. That'll reduce your score. You should paraphrase it as much as you can. Remember, the lecture details are more important than the reading details. If you're running out of time and you need to cut something, cut out reading details. Use your time for lecture details. A conclusion is fine. <clears throat> you can include a concluding paragraph, but I don't think it's necessary, and I don't even think it'll increase your score. I've taken the test several times. I've never included a conclusion, and my score has always been quite good. I recommend about 280 words in total before any possible conclusion. You can write more, you can write less, but I think 280 is a good number. The most common pitfalls uh, that students experience when they're writing this task. Well, uh, sometimes students write a needlessly long introduction. In my opinion, the introduction is the least important part of this essay. So don't waste too much time on that. Three sentences, maybe four minutes, that's all you need. 
Sometimes students spend too much time emphasizing the reading content. As I said, that's the least important part of the essay. Uh, students often are told to mention the lecture details first in each body paragraph. I think that's a huge mistake because it, it makes the job more kind of complicated for the student and more challenging. Uh, stick with mentioning the reading first and then the lecture and your job will be a lot easier just in terms of logic and grammar. I often see essays that are way too long. Sometimes students write three, four, five, six hundred words. That's wild. Don't do that focus on quality rather than quantity. Uh, though sometimes I do get essays that are way too short. I get like 100 words, 150. Uh, that's just not enough to include all the details. So write a bit more than that. And the other pitfall is inaccurate practice materials. Make sure the, the sample tests you're using look like that structure I showed you at the beginning of the video. If they don't look like that, they, they may be bad practice materials. It's probably best to use stuff that comes from ETS itself, as that tends to be the most accurate, of course. Okay, I will leave it at, leave it at that, but if you have any questions, uh, you can leave a comment down below. You can send me an email, or you can visit the link on the screen there. Also, as I said, if you have gone ahead and written that whole essay, uh, consider pasting it in as a comment down below and I'll try to uh, I'll try to give you a little bit of feedback and suggestions about what you did right and what you did wrong. All right, that's all for now, but uh, come back to the channel in a few days. I should have another video for you. Take care. Bye-bye.